Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to this video. Today we are going to take a look at the top 10 new features in Windows 11 23H2. Now if you don't know whether or not you have 23H2, just follow along here. Right click your start charm and then go to system. And then scroll down here until you see version and I am on 23H2. If you see something different than that, uh, what you're going to want to do is go to updates, Windows updates. And make sure this is turned on. Get the latest updates as soon as they're available. Turn that on. As of Halloween, uh, October 31st, 2023, 23H2 should be available for everyone if you're running Windows 11. So turn that on and then go ahead and check for updates. Looks like I've got an issue I need to address there, but we'll do that later. Um, <laughs> and then check for updates. Like I said, you should see 23H2. Download that. You'll probably have to reboot at least once and then come back and make sure you're running 23H2. All right, if you did that and you're ready to follow along, we can go ahead and jump right in. Again, we're going to be looking at 10 features. I may throw in a couple bonuses here. So make sure you guys stick around to the end of this video so you can see all the new cool stuff. And some of it's really cool, in my opinion, that Windows 11 23H2 has to offer. And if you guys are finding value out of this as you're watching along, consider hitting that thumbs up button. Leave me a comment. I always respond. And subscribe to the channel because I'm still trying to grow it and I really appreciate everyone's support. All right, guys, so like I said, we're going to look at at least 10 features here, and there may be a couple bonus features. So the first feature I actually want to talk about today is going to be the new AI Copilot, which is basically like a little chat bot. Let me clear this stuff here. And it's an assistant slash chat bot. This integrates with GPT-4 on the back end. This could easily be a whole video on its own, so I won't go too deep into this. Some people hate it. Some people love it. I'd say I'm probably right in the middle. Um, I think it's cool. I don't know that I'll use it a whole lot right now, but I'm definitely going to keep an eye on this because I think it has a lot of potential. So let's just show you a quick example. Um, we can tell it to do things on our computer. Turn off dark mode. Now this part's a little bit annoying. You have to wait for it to you know, analyze what you said, and then you do have to hit yes or no. I tried to turn this off. It said it can't turn it off. So you do have to acknowledge an answer. So you can there you go and it'll talk back to you um, through audio or it'll type on the screen you can obviously ask this to do things that you would ask chat gpt um, come up with a funny story tell me a joke uh, ask it a question about anything in the world what's the largest tree etc etc it can do all that it can also open applications so you can type as well you don't have to always talk so open microsoft excel well you gotta type it out Again, a little annoying right now. You have to hit yes, and it will open it. It doesn't interact with the applications, but it can open them for you. Uh, another thing that I see a lot of people talk about is it can open a focus session for you. If you're not familiar with that, Windows 11 integrated what they call a focus session. Uh, it, let's say you want to study for 30 minutes, but you keep getting distracted because you're on your computer and things are popping up, notifications, uh, YouTube, stuff like that. It can drown all that noise out, and now it even integrates with Spotify. So if you have like some study music or focus music, uh, you can set all that up and then tell it, hey, start a 30-minute focus session. So kind of cool. Again, I think this has a ton of potential with uh, Microsoft 365, with the integration that they're talking about. I don't have 365, but with the integration that they've been talking about as far as uh, reading your emails and summarizing things. So let's say you went on vacation for a month, you come back probably never get a month-long vacation let's be honest but a couple weeks and you come back and uh, you need to catch up on 5,000 emails so maybe it can go in there and read them all filter out the noise uh, tell you the ones that are critical that you need to respond to and kind of summarize everything now that would be a huge benefit in my opinion so like I said I won't be using this a whole lot right now but I will keep an eye on it to see where this goes all right guys up next believe it or not is actually the taskbar this one I found a little bit funny <laughs> Let me show you why. So if you go to personal settings, personalization, taskbar behaviors, and you scroll all the way down, you're going to see two things here. Combine taskbar buttons and hide labels, and then the same thing on other taskbar. So this is like your primary monitor or taskbar, and this is any other taskbars you have. So if you have two, three, four monitors, whatever, this would be all the secondaries. This would be the primary. So let me show you if I turn this on. I'm sorry, if I turn this off, technically. We go back to like Windows 95 style. I won't be using this for sure, but... If you like it, go for it. So it basically separates everything, brings it back to the old rectangle view here down here, and it includes the label. So it'll tell you what it is. 
I much prefer this style. Um, like if you had five different browsers open or five different instances of Chrome, they would all be here. You hover and then you can select which one. If you do this, it's going to break them all out. Uh, again, not a fan. Not sure why they brought it back, but I'm sure some people have use cases. So let me know what you guys think about that. I will not be using that one. I thought it was funny that they went way back in time, in my opinion. But again, let me know what you think. All right, guys, up next is actually File Explorer. Got a little bit of a makeover here. It's pretty cool. So aesthetically, anyway, it looks really nice. You can see the rounded edges everywhere. Uh, no more hard, sharp edges. Uh, one cool feature here as well is the gallery. So this will give you a... It'll basically pull in all the images and um, videos from your computer and set those up in a gallery type view where you've got thumbnails. And it does this from a timeline perspective. So it'll do like month by month. Um, so kind of cool, different type of feature. That brings us to our right hand side of the file explorer where they included a nice little details pane now. You can turn this off and on right up here. But I kind of like it. Shows you the details of the image, the metadata, things like that. So a nice feature in my opinion. Uh, another thing you can do with a new one here guys is you can open separate tabs. So they've done this with a few of the baked in utilities in Windows now. You can uh, tab have multiple tabs and then you can actually pull these out to have a separate instance. So I think this is really cool. I uh, hope they do this with more and more applications in Windows. So overall, I think uh, two thumbs up for the improvements on the File Explorer. All right, guys, next up is actually the backup application. So let's take a look at Windows Backup. It's a app. Nice little UI here. It's got multiple settings. So you can go ahead, you can go in here and see what you're backing up, what you're not, and then you can go ahead and kick off a backup right from here. So this can do um, apps, it can even do like your pinned app preferences, all that type of stuff, and then you'd hit backup. And if you ever had to restore or create a new fresh install, you could use this to restore all of your settings right on there. Again, a whole video for some of these, so let me know if you guys need more information on any of them. All right guys, next feature we're gonna look at is dynamic lighting. This is under settings, personalization, and you should have dynamic lighting. You can turn this on or off. This basically adjusts the um, brightness, the color temperature of your device or your monitors. It's made to kind of mimic the natural light cycles. It's supposed to help you with sleep and things like that, depending on what time of day and the ambient lighting and things like that. It, uh, again, like it says, it's dynamic, so it kind of adjusts on its own. All right, guys, another cool feature that they released is what they call Dev Drives. So if you're a developer or you tinker a lot and you don't want to mess up your system, this is something you might want to look at. So this would allow you to create a dev drive as basically a virtual hard drive, and then you can do all the tinkering and testing and developing you want without blowing up your system. So pretty cool. All right, guys, next feature I think is pretty cool here is the native support for 7-zip and RAR files now. So no more third-party applications. Obviously, you can still use them if you prefer them. But I have a 7-zip file here, and I can extract it uh, using the built-in extraction tool to Windows 11. So extract all, extract, and there it is. So a really useful tool. All right, guys, next up is the snipping tool. This is one of my favorites as far as the new features. I was always a big fan of GreenShot over the built-in snipping tool, but I don't know. I think I might have to revert back to the snipping tool now. So let's take a look at what this thing can do. Uh, it can now do video or pictures. The video is capable of audio as well. So let's do a quick image snip here. So let me open a browser and we'll take a quick snip here. And it can do some different things here. So we can actually read text. So like OCR, right? So you can read the text, copy it, whatever you want, directly from a snip. So that's obviously really cool. Uh, it allows you to open it right up in Paint. And I'll show you a feature within Paint here in a second where you can remove the background. So you could easily take a snip of a picture and then edit in Paint, remove the background with just a number of clicks there, maybe two or three clicks. So really cool. Uh, we won't go too deep into this, but let me show you how you can do a video as well. So let's go ahead and do a video, new, and we'll select uh, just this region here. And then we're gonna hit Start up here. Let's go ahead and turn on the microphone. 
This is a test. We are doing a test of the snipping tool video. Let's see how it looks. Alright, so just like that you have a snipping tool video. Let's check it out. This is a test. We are doing a test of the snipping tool video. Let's see how it looks. And then you have the ability to uh, edit that, save that, copy that, all kinds of cool stuff here. So you could probably make, we could probably make a mini video just on the snipping tool enhancements. Uh, I'm obviously a fan. Two thumbs up for that one. All right, guys, so the next one is paint, and I'm also pretty excited about this one. Paint has got a drastic upgrade, in my opinion, um, just from a few years ago when this you basically couldn't do anything in here besides the basics. This has turned into a really powerful tool. So let me give you an example. Let's download a picture of just a random person. Bring this over here so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so let's go to images.google.com and just get a person. Um, let's try this. See if we can just copy this and paste it in there. Zoom in on that. And not the best quality, so it may not be a good example, but let's try it anyway. This button is really cool. Let me resize this. It is remove background, so very powerful. I did a quick video on this as well, but look at that, guys. This is really good and really fast. Even the hair is there, so very powerful. This takes a while, at least for me in Photoshop, to get something like that done. You can now do it right in paint, so that is obviously really cool. A few new features as well, but this is another one that stands out. Uh, you can create layers, too, so if you're an editor, this is very powerful. Um, Again, this could warrant a full video, but just know that you can create additional layers in paint. But another really cool one, guys, is the AI. Uh, this is where Copilot comes in. So we can just try to do um, a castle in ancient Rome. I don't even know if they had castles, but hey, let's see what it comes up with. <laughs> So this is basically going to use AI, uh, I believe this ties into Dolly 3, and it will create images natively right in paint. So look at that guys, very cool stuff. I think we can add these or open these, yeah. So I think we just blasted over our layer, but we probably should have added a new layer and then put that in that layer. And then maybe put this up, yeah, so there you go. So you can get creative, use AI to create um, additional pictures. I think you can even expand if you upload a picture. You can have it uh, expand the picture itself. So if you need more of the background, um, forget the term. I think it's called generative fill, AI generative fill. So really cool. Again, a full video on this one is uh, something that maybe in the future, let me know if you guys have tested it out and what you think. I obviously like it, so that's another two thumbs up for the update. All right, guys, piggybacking off of Paint, our next feature update I want to look at is in Photos, and specifically the editing capabilities. Um, it's not full-blown Photoshop, but for a lot of us, I think between like the, future, the features and Snipping Tool, Paint, and now Photos, um, we can get the job done here, guys, to be honest. just depends on, obviously, your use case, but um, my wife is extremely talented with photography and editing and I learned the term bokeh. I, th I hope I'm saying that right. That's where you blur the background out to really focus on the um, image. So now you can do that natively in photos which is really cool. So you can do the intensity. If you want that background super blurry or not so blurry, right? Kind of helps the um, the foreground or the focus point of the image pop. So there's no, no blur and there's about a 70% blur or so. Really cool. So you can do that with just the slide of a bar here. You can also replace the background with something new, or you can remove the background altogether. And really cool. So let me know what you guys think about that one. Two thumbs up for the photo features upgrade. All right, guys. Next one I want to look at is the improvements to Notepad. This is really Windows 11 in general, but I really like the new look for Notepad and the features. So we covered 10 23H2 specific features. This is just kind of a bonus. So Notepad is now way better than it used to be in Windows 10 uh, for a few reasons. You can have multiple tabs here, right? 
and then you can also just start typing and if you were to close this or reboot your computer I'm sorry not close it but if you were to just reboot your computer and not save this it treats it like it used to do the sticky notes in Windows it'll just automatically save this and bring it right back up it's a little bonus one there for you guys if you're not using notepad um, you might consider using it now because it just looks better with these rounded edges it works better and it's really cool you don't have to have 50 notepads if you're doing different work you can keep your notes right here on the built-in notepad all right guys so that is going to wrap up the new features in windows 11 23h2 let me know what you guys think let me know if you have questions on any of these specific ones that we looked at today let me know if i missed anything that you really think is cool in 23h2 i'd be glad to do a follow-up video or a deeper dive on any of these features Thanks a lot for joining the video today, guys, and tuning in. If you got any value out of this, hit the thumbs up button, consider subscribing, leave me a comment, share the video with your friends. Until the next one, hope you all have a great day. Take care, guys. Uh -huh.